Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Massage Unwrapped. I am your host, Linda Roysom, and joining me today is Sue Wood, and we are going to be discussing shiatsu. Now, Sue uh, got interested in shiatsu after seeing a segment on the evening news back in 1996 about a heart surgeon in Denver who gave a patient who was preparing for open heart surgery a menu of alternative health treatments to choose from. After hearing about the amazing results, she decided to become a massage therapist. While trying to pick a massage school, a friend suggested that she looked, look into the Meridian Shiatsu Institute in Wayne, Pennsylvania. She had never even heard of the word shiatsu before, but signed up for a one-day intro class. The minute she walked into the building, she knew that she was in the right place. She started taking classes two weeks later and has been practicing in shiatsu since graduating in 1999. Welcome to the show, Sue. Uh, thanks, Linda. It's nice to be here. I'm just curious about that segment that you saw. What kind of alternative, do you remember back to 1996, what kind of alternative um, menu of services did this um, uh, uh, surgeon offer the patient? It was incredible. He offered them a choice of acupuncture, hypnosis, massage, Reiki, therapeutic touch, and the person that the new space segment was on was a 70-year-old man having open-heart surgery. So they did this in place of, like, anesthesia? Well, they say, they said, in the news report, they said that the man used, like, 20% less anesthesia during the surgery. The surgery was con um, a considerable decrease in the time the surgery took and a very large decrease in the amount of blood loss during the surgery. Well, that, that is pretty amazing. I could see why, after seeing that, you would become interested in shiatsu or, or in um, massage therapy in general. Um, so tell us a little bit about shiatsu. Okay, well, shiatsu is a Japanese form of body work. It's um, very similar to acupressure. You're using your hands and your fingers along the meridians of chi energy in the body. Um, and it has its basis in traditional Chinese medicine. So a lot of the assessments that I use with my clients before I start a session are the same that your uh, same um, assessments your acupuncturist would use. Now you mentioned um, when we were talking before the interview started about five elements. Um, so that would be like um, the same like in Chinese traditional medicine that they use the five elements. Yes. And how is that incorporated into shiatsu? Because when you look at the five elements, they all have associations. And, w and the ancient Chinese viewed the human body as a microcosm of the universe. So they looked at the cycles of the human body very similar to the, the cycles of nature, the seasons. And each element is associated with the season of the year. So it would be uh, water, wood, fire, air, and what's the fifth one? Well, it's not air in Chinese medicine. It's it's um, it's wood, earth, well, wood, earth, fire, water, and metal. Oh, so that's uh, kind of similar to like feng shui. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a I'm a feng shui practitioner, so. Ah, there you go. Okay, so the five elements from that. That's that's very interesting. What what kind of conditions are, is the modality used for? Well, shiatsu can be used for almost anything that you would normally use massage for. Um, use it for pain relief, stress relief, back pain. Um, I've had incredible success with women who are dealing with uh, perimenopausal symptoms, especially hot flashes. Oh, hot flashes. Um, now, what kind of um, treatment would you give somebody that's going through hot flashes? Well, I would work a lot on the fire and the water meridians, and then I usually teach my clients um, acupressure protocol to use at home. And I usually recommend that they do it three times a day for about a week. And usually at the end of the week, the hot flashes have um, decreased considerably in the, the frequency. And then once they get the high, hot flashes down to maybe no times, if they're real lucky, or once a day, just using that uh, protocol as maintenance, oh, maybe a day or once a week. So um, why would somebody want to seek out shiatsu as opposed to a different type of massage? Ah, that's a good question. 
because, you know, most people, when they think relaxing, they think taking off my clothes, getting under clean sheets, getting a Swedish massage. But um, shiatsu is really good for people who might be a little more modest and have maybe never had a massage and are a little hesitant about taking their clothes off with a stranger. Mm -hmm. um, and also for people who are just looking for a different experience. Now, is a shiatsu um, a... I've had shiatsu once. Um, it was actually my second massage um, back in uh, the late 90s. Um, and the way that the client did it, I mean, sorry, the therapist did it, I was lying on a table and they basically walked on me. They were supporting themselves with a bar. Is that a different kind of shiatsu or uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that or if do you know what she was doing? It was probably barefoot shiatsu. And that, shiatsu has a lot of variations because it's history, um, oops, you know, because of the different other Asian influences on it. But there's barefoot shiatsu, which is probably what you have, where they're holding onto the poles. There's uh, five element shiatsu, which I do. There's zen shiatsu. Um, there's all, there's a, quite a few different types. There's what they call eclectic, which is kind of a mixture of all of them. Okay. Now, how would you evaluate a client who came to see you for shiatsu? Okay. My evaluations or assessments are very similar. Have you ever had acupuncture, Linda? I have, actually, just uh, a few weeks ago. Okay. So, the assessments I use are very similar, probably, to what your acupuncturist uses. I take the um, pulses. I check the pulses on the wrist for the each of the um, meridians. And I sometimes do a tongue diagnosis or use what they call the three burning spaces on the front of the body to check the temperature of the body or occasionally even the shoe points along the bladder meridians on the back. So if somebody was coming to you for, say, low back pain, mm -hmm. what kind of um, pulses would you take for them and how would you be able to assess what they needed during the, treat the treatment session? Well, no matter what they come in for, you assess all 12 pulses because even though the person is having lower back pain, which you would normally associate with um, the water element and the bladder meridian, that be, could be caused by a blockage or stagnation somewhere else. So you'd want to clear out and that might actually take care of the back pain before you even get to the back. Okay. So um, expanding the evaluation, what does a typical session look like? Typical session, my clients come in, we do a little, they do, they fill out a health history intake, just like you would when you go for a massage appointment. We discuss what's on their intake sheet, looking for any contraindications to massage. We um, evaluate what their short-term and long-term goals are for coming in for sessions. And then I do my assessments. I usually check the pulses first, and then I take it from there. And then I take a, a minute or two to kind of look at all the information I have. And also because I use a lot of the five elements in my assessment, I'm usually very aware of the type of words and phrasing that people use to describe how they're feeling. Like, I'm feeling stuck, or I feel like I'm being pushed along, or, you know, things that would bring to mind one of the elements or their association. So I look at that carefully and then I devise my my treatment plan which of course you know can change the minute I put my hands on you. Oh, okay. Gives you a basis of a starting point and a goal for the at least for that session. So your typical first session with me can be almost an hour and a half with about 20 to 30 minutes for the assessment part. Okay, and then uh, future sessions are usually, what, 60 minutes? Or they can also be 90 minutes. minutes. Okay. Now, do you, do you have a video clip of you doing shiatsu? I don't have a clip of me doing shiatsu, but I do have one that I believe you have a link to that people could take a look at. Okay, um, so that's the one that you sent me of the man yes. doing it on the back and everything like that. Yeah. Okay, great. I will put a link to that uh, below this video yeah. so that people can take a look at, and that's similar to the type of shiatsu that you do? Mm -hmm. He's doing it the traditional way on a mat on the floor, though, in that video. Okay, so I know you gave us the um, example of the uh, woman with hot flashes, but can you give us another one or two examples of how you've used 
shiatsu with a client, what conditions did they have? What um, conditions? And how, how long did it take for them to oh. get relief? Okay, um, I've treated several, quite a few people as a matter of fact for migraines. And I found, I have one client in particular that I've treated for years. In fact, she was my client in student clinic when I was in school. And she came in originally with migraines. And in the first few months, um, she'd come in once a week. And the migraines, and they were very frequent. She would not have a migraine for maybe 24 to 48 hours. And we used to, I used to think as a student that was a success rate. Um, and I found that as over the months and then the years went by, the migraines got further and further apart and less intense. So I considered her one of my best, you know, success stories because I think uh, she just moved out west actually. Right before she left, I think we had them pretty much under control. And I've also done shiatsu for people who are suffering from insomnia. And again, it takes um, a few sessions and I like to give my clients homework. So just like with the hot flashes, there's a protocol of points you can use mostly around the ankles that if you use them at home on a regular basis in between sessions, your insomnia should be gone in a couple of weeks and you should be sleeping like a baby through the night. Oh, excellent. No, just out of curiosity, because the five elements really interest me, what what um, elements would be uh, affected for both the migraines and the insomnia? The migraines depend on what's causing them, whether it's allergies, um, food allergies, seasonal allergies, hormones. It that would depend on what element you treat. I found for insomnia, using the wood and the water um, points around the ankles on either side of the ankles helps a lot. Now are these elements associated to a certain meridian or um, how are there certain just points for the um, elements too? In no, um, each, mer each element has two meridians that are associated with it so take the water element for example that would be kidney and bladder coincidentally and uh, with the wood element, it would be gallbladder and liver. Oh, I see. Oh, very interesting. So how long is your training for Shiatsu? When I went to school, I did a 400-hour certification program, including 100 hours of anatomy and physiology. And then I was lucky enough to go to a school where they had an instructor's training program. So I did another 425 hours of Shiatsu instructor training. So I did almost a thousand hours total and continuing ed when I can. Okay, so do you practice other types of massage too or you just are solely focused on shiatsu? No, I do sweet, some Swedish massage and I, in the past few years I've started doing and I teach classes in Thai herbal compress. Very interesting. And um, Reiki. Oh, excellent. Um, so you're, you're practicing, um, you're in Pennsylvania, is that right? Yes, my office is in Conshohocken, and I also go to some of my clients. I see them in their homes. Okay. Um, now, what is a typical price uh, for shiatsu? What do you charge, and is that uh, what you would see typically across the board? Well, myself, I charge about a hundred dollars a session, and I, I've seen shiatsu offered for about anywhere from seventy-five dollars well, a session to about one hundred and twenty-five. Okay, and so that would be depending on where the actual massage business was that offered the, the shiatsu. Right, location, or... location, location. Exactly. Um, so now if somebody was in your area, how could they get in touch with you? Okay, they can either reach me uh, by phone at 484-995-1123 or my email address, which is shiatsu, S-H-I-A-T-S-U-E, at gmail.com. That was a very good um, use of your name and the type of modality that you uh, put together. I must say. Well, that's I must, your luck. Or I must commend you on just, that. <laughs> <laughs> you picked the right modality. <laughs> yes. So if somebody doesn't happen to be in Pennsylvania, um, how um, is there a, a, a directory of Shiatsu practitioners that somebody could find somebody in their area? Yes, absolutely. You can go to AOBTA.org, and AOBTA is the American Organization of the Body Therapies of Asia. 
So they have a directory of shiatsu practitioners all over the country. Okay. And um, for the massage therapists who are listening who may be interested in shiatsu now, but they're already massage therapists, um, is it just a continuing education um, class that they need to take, or is it also a certification program that they would have to get 400 hours in? Well, I could be a snob and say it's a certification program, but... Um, <laughs> You know, I think it could be done as a continuing ed program, but it would probably take more than three days. I'd say um, I do a, a continuing ed program occasionally that's two days long, and that's just the basics. But, you know, when you're a massage therapist and you're coming in with a, a knowledge of the body already and a comfort level with working with people, usually you can do shiatsu as continuing ed if you're already a therapist. Okay. Um, now, is there any last-minute advice that you would give to um, somebody who is interested in trying shiatsu but maybe hasn't um, tried it yet? What would you What would you say to them? I would just say definitely try it. It's a definite. It's a definite different experience. It does everything for your body and your mind and your spirit that massage can do. And in my experience, I've found that the benefits and the effects seem to last a little bit longer. Um, than with Swedish massage, say. And you could go to the AOBTA and look up a practitioner. Make sure you get your first experience, at least, from somebody who is certified in the modality. Okay. Now, do you think that shiatsu is um, right for somebody who's never had a massage before, or um, they should be at least had some type of massage before before they go into a, a shiatsu-type massage? Oh, no. It's definitely a good massage for a first-timer. Great. Well, I want to thank you for being my guest today on Massage Unwrapped. I really enjoyed um, learning about um, shiatsu. I'm going to actually have to try and find somebody in my area. I actually had the shiatsu session when I was in New York, visiting New York, and ah. I'm not sure that there's anybody around my area. I'm going to have to have to look it up and see because now I'm interested in trying this, the five element. Um, Are you near the Thai Sophia Institute? I'm in um, Alexandria, Virginia. So you're not too far from Thai Sophia, which I think is in Maryland. It's an acupuncture school, but I believe there's some, uh, you might find a shiatsu practitioner or two hanging around there. Okay, I'll have to look that up. Um, you'd be surprised how far Maryland could be away. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> but anyway, I want to thank you very much for being my guest um, uh, on this episode of Massage Unwrapped. Thanks so much, Linda. And until next time, I'm Linda Roysom.